For the last 20 years, this is what competitions used to look like for me. But in 2001, I went behind the scenes to experience competitions in a different way as a meat director. To be honest, this is a job I never thought I'd do because being a meat director is a lot of responsibility. You have the life and safety of over 100 people in your hands. So I never thought I'd do this. I always looked up to meat directors like uh, Xavier Murillo, Goran Demiskovsky, Nikki Moss and Carol Fraudenthal because they all had qualities that make them great meat directors. So when I used to go to competitions, I always thought that if I ever had to do this job, I would take the best of each of these meat directors and try to be the best one I could be. This is a very hard job because if the weather is good, pilots are gonna love you no matter what you do. But if conditions are tricky, anything you'll decide will be criticized. If you cancel the day, someone's gonna say, Oh, we could have flown the task. So it's very hard to keep everyone happy. In 2021, my friend Larry Pino asked me if I wanted to work with him to be the mid director of the Nordic Open in Pedro Bernardo. And it took me a long time to say yes. First of all, I was scared of a lot of things. I was scared of not being good enough, of not being respected by the pilots, of losing my mind. <laughs> I guess this is what they call today imposter syndrome, in which you have the abilities to do something and you just don't realize it or, or don't believe in yourself. After doing a lot of thinking, I said yes, and I took the following approach, to be the best mid director possible. And to do that, I had to learn the rules by heart, and also I wanted to be friendly, respectful, but strict. The Nordic Open went very well. The weather was good, but the feel of pilot was very varied. There were people flying school gliders and people flying CCC gliders. So it was very hard to design the tasks for all levels of pilots and keep everyone safe and happy. At first, I said, okay, I'm gonna fly the task so I can also enjoy myself a little bit and have a better view of what's going on. But it was too stressful. I tried to fly the first two tasks and realized very quickly that I couldn't do my job, I couldn't focus. So I decided to stay on the ground the rest of the competition so I can focus 100% on my job. In the end, pilots were happy, I think. And the most important thing is that there were no major accidents. After the Nordics, I was very pleased with the results, but I went home exhausted and burned out, and I said, I'm never gonna do this again. Even if things went well, I was overwhelmed because I was immersed in the competition 24 seven. I guess I'm a little bit of an introvert, and I need time for myself to disconnect and recharge for the next day. So when in 2022, when Larry asked me again to work with him, but this time at the Belgian Open in Piedraita in Spain, it took me months to decide, but I finally said yes after I figured out what to do so I wouldn't burn out. This time I decided to travel by car so I could camp and have my own space after every task. Well, good morning everyone. As you can see, my car is packed and well, I'm gonna take you along this trip. Seriously, Siri, if you didn't tell me, I wouldn't have known. Thank you anyway. I spent one of the worst nights of my life here. That's the way to do it. Yeah, he doesn't look so comfortable. Now it's time to keep going to the right. Well, good morning everyone. I just woke up in this little paradise. I had a very cold night in my tent and uh, yeah my friend Larry recommended this spot 
it's great. It's uh, it's quiet. Two deer just walked by. It's gonna be a beautiful day for the training task of the Nordic Open. It's gonna be a fun week. I hope so. I hope the weather cooperates so the pilots have fun. I'm gonna make coffee now. I was given the perfect spot and it was great because I was able to relax in the middle of nature, prepare the briefings and just have time on my own and recharge before every task. During the comp, the first challenge I had was to organize the takeoff area. Pedreita has a huge takeoff, but it can easily become very small. The problem is that pilots end up opening too many gliders at the same time, so nobody has the space to open their gliders properly and launch safely. This side also has the problem that it can become very windy, so having pilots too close to each other can become dangerous in case someone gets dragged. So I had the idea of dividing the takeoff in seven gates. I decided to mark each gate with a cone so the pilots could queue behind it. It ended up working great and in most tasks we had everyone off the takeoff 45 minutes before the start gate opened. Throughout the week the weather was very nice and we ended up flying every day but one. But still, in this day that we had to cancel, that it was very obvious that it was going to be very windy, still some pilots complained and said we could have flown a task, but it was too windy. <laughs> it also went well in terms of safety. We only had one reserve, one complicated retrieve, a guy who sprained his wrist because he slipped off on takeoff, and one complicated landing near goal without any serious consequences. But as always, things got a little bit complicated. Unfortunately, I had to deal with pilots being aggressive or careless, both on the ground and in the air. I had to give warnings and penalties, and that was the toughest part, having to penalize people I know and I care about. I had to give warnings for silly things like uh, returning the tractor, things that are in the end very important for pilot safety. But it was the only way I could be fair with everyone by being strict and enforcing the rules. I was surprised on how aggressive pilots were in the air and during one of the briefings I had to take my time and tell pilots just to chill out and have fun because it wasn't worth getting hurt. In the end, it was a very rewarding experience and I think pilots were happy with my job and that was the most important thing, that pilots go back home after a fun week of flying and that they get their money's worth because competitions can get a little bit expensive and if you pay for a service like an organization and the organizers don't do their job, even if you fly well, Pilots might go back home feeling a little bit disappointed. So I was very happy that the whole team did a great job. My job wouldn't have been possible without my team. I had a great team, the organizer, the pilot committee, safety committee, the drivers who were at the same time helpers on takeoff. Everyone did a great job and I couldn't have done it without them. Will I do it again? Of course, <laughs> it was fun. I don't think I'll make it a career though, but I think it's great to be behind the scenes of our sport and help a little bit and contribute to this beautiful sport of ours. Well, thank you all for your trust and see you at briefing. A gaggle of pilots and here they all thermal into the right. Please, to the left, thank you. Please, guys, do not charge, do not charge like this.